Hey everyone and welcome to another video. So today I'm going to be showing you how to paint a honeybee. So let's do it! Okay, so to start I'm just going to go through my materials. I have my Arches watercolor paper, I have my Windsor Newton Common watercolors, my paper towel, my Princeton snap brush, and my water and we're ready to go. Okay, so we are going to do a bee. <laughs> Now, you either love them or you don't, um, but we're just going to paint them anyway because I feel like lots of people are painting them, so I'm just going to teach you how I would approach it. So, I'm going to take my yellow ochre and I'm just going to do my outline with this color just to lay down where I want everything to go on this bead. So, we're going to start off with the head. It's kind of like a... Ovally, not oval, like a rectangle that's that has like curved edges. Okay, and then you're gonna go out and create this like. Oh my gosh, I used to know all the parts of the bee when I taught kindergarten. <laughs> the body here, and then. <clears throat> the butt <laughs> there are definitely technical terms for this guys i totally forget but i did know at one point so it's kind of like in three sections okay this is going to be the black kind of fuzzy part this is going to be the stripy part that's the head where the eyes are it's going to go a little bit like a little curve here and you're going to do some antennae And they're like straight line, then another straight line with like a like yeah, anyway, like that. <laughs> and then their legs. So you have two legs up here. Now the legs are in sections, so just think like one section, another section. So just like turn it, turn your line, and then a small one, okay? One section, turn it, another section, and then a small one for the little foot, okay? So they have six legs. Another one that comes out this way. And then another section, a small leg. <clears throat> Same here, one, two, three, and then the bigger legs kind of come out from underneath here, it looks like. So it's a bit longer. I'm sorry, the reason why I'm doing it in yellow is just to kind of plot down where I want these things. If you would like to do it in pencil, you can totally do that too. I'm going to end up going over this with black once we start painting it, um, but just yellow, just so I can see, but it's also a color you can paint over quite easily. Okay, so... The last legs are longer. And they can be really pointing whatever way you want them to be. This doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, like that. And then we are going to do the wings after. Okay, so let's start painting. So I'm going to be using black, but a light wash of my black. I don't want it to be like jet black, okay? So I'm just going to go over this head part that's kind of black. What I'm going to do, actually I'm going to take some more black, more paint, and I'm just going to kind of tap it in just to give it a bit of depth. So not all over. So one side of it will be a little bit lighter than the other side, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a smaller brush, a dry brush, and I'm just going to flick it out a bit because it's fuzzy, right? Just 
just a dry small brush and just flick it out so you get that kind of bee fuzz okay like that I'm just gonna go back in and make this side darker like that and now I'm gonna paint this part you can even like add some yellowish orangish in there too because it has like kind of this like orange fuzz onto it we even add some brown okay and again adding that darker paint to that one side it's almost like this side is going to be the shadow okay it just makes it look a bit more three-dimensional rather than like a flat surface and then again you're just going to take your dry brush Look out just a little bit. <clears throat> just to make it look like there's some fuzz. And if your paintbrush soaks up too much of the paint and it becomes a bit more wet, just dry it on your, on your paper towel. I think even adding a bit of yellow. Turn it this way. Because the fuzz is kind of yellow. Okay. Actually, I'm going to add a bit more yellow, I think. I'm gonna add some yellow to this black and then I'm gonna try and flick it out. I'm gonna need another <laughs> brush, dry brush, because I just totally wet this one. Okay. Where is another dry brush? Here we go. Okay. And just flick out that yellow fuzz. Okay. You get the gist of it. All right. All right, and now we're gonna do the bottom half, the body. But we are going to do it in the yellow ochre color. We're gonna cover the whole bottom in this color, and then we're gonna do the black stripes over top. So I'm gonna fill it in. Actually try and do a light wash of it, because again, we're gonna put the darker bits at the side so it makes it look a bit more three-dimensional. Okay, if you don't have yellow ochre, you can use just cadmium yellow if you like, or you can mix that with a bit of red, just cause it's almost like a, an orangey color, honestly, up close. Okay, then you're just gonna deepen that color on that one side, like that. And then you can just add a bit of texture just by flicking little lines, especially over that light area. You can even take a dry brush and just kind of flick it out. Just create some texture. Okay. Because these little guys are fuzzy. Again, just going back into this one side. And I'm gonna let that completely dry before I go over top um, with the black. Okay, so now that it's completely dry, I'm gonna go in with my paintbrush and add the black bit. So it looks like 
there's a smaller, a thinner line up towards the top here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back in with some more color, just make it really dark on that one side again, okay? And then there's another one, almost halfway down. Adding that darker black on that one side. Okay. And then it starts to get a bit thicker. Cars and motorcycles have to be so loud. <laughs> I hate living on a main road. Now this one started to dry here. I'm just gonna re-wet that area. Okay, and then it gets thicker and closer together. Now the reason why I did the yellow first is because I kind of like seeing that yellow underneath the black here. Because again, you have that yellow kind of fuzz. And then the bottom bottom is black. Okay. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna take my dry brush and I'm just gonna create a little bit of fuzz. Oh, I wet it again. <laughs> oh, dry brush people, dry brush, sorry. Okay, actually what I might do, such a natural habit, is taking keep wanting to wet it. Taking some paint on that dry brush and I'm just gonna create a little bit of texture by putting some yellow on there and just flicking it around. Okay. Just give it a little bit of texture. Yeah, it's gonna pick up some of that black just try to be careful with it. It's okay if it darkens up a bit. It's a B. It doesn't have to be perfect. But you like some of that kind of fuzzy texture. Okay. <clears throat> and then... Okay. And so now that that's done, we are going to do the legs. Okay. So the legs are black. We're just going to go over top of our lines from before. And same with the antennae, antenna, antennae, I don't know, whatever. Okay, now we're just gonna do this other leg. Okay, there we go. And I actually might take a bit of my yellow again. Just add a little bit of fuzz in between some of those joints like that. And there we go. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna wait for it to completely dry so we can do the wings over top and just hope it turns out.
Okay, so now that that's completely dry, we are going to start the wings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create the line of where the wing goes. <clears throat> Kind of comes out here I have a, like a, a light brown color okay so it curves down a bit just doing the top part of that wing like that Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my white ink. I have Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink and I'm going to, it's really dry, I need to get some new ones. I've left it open a few times, don't tell anybody. Okay, I'm gonna take my white ink and I'm gonna mix it with some yellow ochre here. And because it's uh, ink and it's not watercolor it's just going to create it's going to be a bit more opaque so and you don't want it to be completely opaque you want to see what's behind these wings but you do want that kind of like little bit of like clear whiteness over top so i'm just gonna do the outline here and you got to make sure that your bee is completely dry before you do this so it doesn't mix it just should be going over top you're just going to create that shape of the wing. See, and you got to be careful because it because it is black, it will mix a bit. Just try not to go over it too many times. Okay. There's one wing. And then the other one. white here and we add that yellow to get that little tinge of color with it okay All right. Okay. And now I'm gonna wait for that to dry. Okay, now that it's completely dry, I'm gonna do the bit of detail on the wings. Um, what I also did was I added a bit more white, just the white paint over to the edge of the wings, just so you could see it a bit more over those black areas. Um, but now we are going to take a very small brush um, we're just going to take a bit of brown. You don't want it to be too dark and too thick. You're going to use a lot of light pressure and you're just going to create some of those um, lines on the wings. Okay, light pressure and just if you can find a reference photo It'll probably work the best so you know where to put some of those lines. Don't feel like it has to be perfect, you guys. But they're basically these little sections. Just very light. And then they kind of like get lighter towards there so you don't actually see the definition towards the end. Of the wing just kind of create these little sections very light brown color if you can
and there you go. There is your cute little honeybee. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.